Yes, we're live. Hi, okay. Peter. Hi, Che. How are you? Good, 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 good. Great. I want to welcome Peter Menku, my friend, young gen, professor. Uh, we're going to talk about many issues today. Today is um, January the 6th, 2021. Yes, yes. Hi, my name is Ching Zhu. Um, I've been doing this um, uh, talk show, uh, a conversation with people, sometimes a, a group of people, sometimes individuals, since March 27th. And Peter, you are number episode 78 today. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And you've done uh, other talk shows with us, with Yang Gen. Yeah, so it's great to see you here. And now I would like to read uh, Peter's uh, short biography to our guests. Um, Peter is a mathematics professor at CUNY and Lehman College. He earned a bachelor's of degree in engineering and a master's of degree in mathematics at CUNY. His research interests are in numerical analysis and probability theory. With most of college courses being moved online, he's finding ways to balance between synchronize and asynchronized method of instruction. You have to explain to us later. In the last two years, um, uh, Peter Menku was drawn to Andrew Yen's presidential campaign, Yen's fondness of math, and his data-driven approach to pinpointing underlying causes of the problems that most Americas face today inspired him to become more politically engaged and active. Peter found Yen's bold, forward-looking approach to the solutions inspiring and refreshing. Menku volunteered for the Yen campaign and spent time with Yen Gen. Thank you so much. Yeah. So, Yes, let's uh, in, let's talk about um, what's going on right now. Like, there's some madness going on at okay. today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It seems people, if they tuned into the news, they could probably see what's going on in DC. Yeah, it was supposed to be a ceremonial thing for Congress to certify the, the electoral votes that were passed for Joe Biden. And it seems, yeah, we have these protesters who are taking matters to another level here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But we have to wait and see now what the outcome of this is, yeah. Right, right. It was like a huge protest um, outside, uh, I would say, either, uh, I don't think at the beginning is at the Capitol Hill. It's a, uh, it's a, uh, so, uh, so I see, I also saw um, uh, Trump made a speech, a very lengthy speech to his supporters. And they strongly believe, you know, like he was the winner. And the election 2020 was uh, rigged. And uh, so they wanted to, you know, protest and they, they're hoping that uh, Vice President, um, Vice right. President Pence, would, uh, you know, do something, or he has a right to. Uh, I don't really know the details of of all the procedures. So anyway, so it's it's now getting out of control. The the, the crowd went into uh, Capitol uh, Hill, and then they even went inside the building and sat on the chairs of, you know, Pelosi or other people's uh, chamber. So it's pretty crazy. Yeah. So now, uh, Peter, how's uh, another kind of, another news was shattered by this, um, this chaos right now is that um, Georgia, so senator election tell us a little bit about well, that the runoff elections in georgia yeah. yeah they were they took place yesterday 
So it does look as if the Democrats won both of those seats. So Warnock was declared the winner officially. Ossoff, it, he had a narrow lead, I think, when I last checked this morning. And I think he gave a speech this morning, like a victory speech. But they haven't, I don't, I don't think they called it yet. But it looks like Ossoff will win just uh, based on the counties where there's outstanding vote. That still needs to be counted, or if it was counted at the last minute. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Likely maybe also mail. some of the count is like a the mail-in count, yeah. right? The, so the, this would put the Democrats with fifty seats in the Senate. Yes, and if you know Biden, the, the way it normally works, the vice president presides over the chamber. Mm -hmm. the Senate. Yeah. So in the case of any ties, you know, uh, Kamala Harris would place the tie-breaking vote. Right. So that basically means the Democrats would have control of the Senate. Right, right. So it's a big victory to Democrat, right? It's the first time uh, in a long time. First of all, it's a long time Georgia never had a black senator. Yes, I heard right? that. Too. Yeah, yeah. And also, uh, Georgia historically is not a blue state. Uh, after the 60s, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was a realignment between the two parties. So yeah. if you go prior yeah. to a certain point, I think in the 60s, around the time Johnson won, yeah. Georgia yeah. was always blue before that. Yeah. <laughs> but then it became red, yeah. Nick is with us. Hi, Nick. Yes. <laughs> it's nice, nice Nick is always, uh, always supporting my shows. So, uh, yeah, so it's like a lot of uh, things going on, and Biden right now is speaking about the U.S. Capitol, yeah, the the violence he's talking. But um, now, tell us a little bit about you. I like to know. I always like to know my guests, like um, their background and where they from or uh and you know whatever specialty they're in how they started to become interested in whatever uh, you know their discipline is so can you tell us a little bit about your background please yeah yes my family is mostly from an eastern european background uh yeah they're mostly romanian hungarian uh, there's uh there's some other roots there too. I found through DNA testing. <laughs> <laughs> I asked my mother about it, and yeah. uh, she wasn't very helpful. So, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So the point is, yeah, that's pretty much mostly my background. Yeah, um, yeah. My we came to the U.S. when I was very young. I was like four years old. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, so again, yeah, pretty much. I, all my schooling was done in the U.S. Everything I learned English at an early age. Uh, I became a citizen. Uh, I would say when I was like nineteen years old. Yeah. So pretty much, yeah. I've always felt part of this country. You know, all. Uh, yeah. So. So that was pretty much it. I mean, we had a pretty traditional upbringing. Uh, if you can imagine strict parents, probably similar to, I guess, what some Asians go through also. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. First generation. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, so stuff like that, yeah. So pretty much, yeah. So when I, actually, the truth is I wasn't always into math and science. I would say in high school I was more of a liberal arts kind of guy. I was more into the humanities. Um, I thought I would be a lawyer or something, you know, but then something happened. I kind of shifted. Yeah, I just thought maybe uh, there could be more to contribute through science. So when I started college, I started doing science, then I did engineering. Then I wanted to do physics or math then because I even got tired of engineering. But the point is, yeah, you reach a point when if you change majors at a certain point, you're never going to graduate. It's always going to be. <laughs> so when I went back to graduate school, I decided to do math, yeah. And that was pretty much it, yeah. 
So yeah, I've been teaching since 2009. Yeah, pretty much math and, uh, and the colleges, yeah. So that's pretty much been it, pretty much. Uh, yeah, the research fields that I'm interested in are numerical analysis and probability theory. These are more areas in applied math now. Um, I was into the pure math for a while too, like uh, particularly when I was in grad school, yeah. So more research in algebra, number theory, stuff like that. But, but yeah, just... I guess, yeah, we shift, I guess, our gear shift, our interests shift, and we want to pursue new horizons sometimes. Yeah. So, so math yeah. is um, math is so um, practical, and we use math, right? A average people use math every day, if not every moment. Uh, I also, uh, I'm a musician as well, so music is also f full of math. You know, I mean, it's not a high, high tech math, but still is a number of goals we deal with. Right. So yeah. math is, is so um, practical and so useful. So um, now tell us a little bit about um, uh, how you were attracted to, to Andrew Yen, because one of his slogan is M-A-T-H. It is not really math. It's called uh, make America think harder. But he also claims himself as a math guy, right? Number guy. Right. He emphasizes that one of the differences between him and Donald Trump is that he likes math. <laughs> yeah. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, I, 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 I was drawn when he said that. But what drew me to Andrew Yang, I remember seeing an interview with him back in 2018, actually. I don't remember exactly when, and in the interview he was talking about UBI, and I thought this is a pretty bold, you know, issue for you to be supporting. I thought about it, but when he spoke in the interview, I realized it's not really a bad idea. I mean, it seemed like a like a good idea. Mm -hmm. When you think of our economy, uh, they say 70% of our economy is just consumption. Mm -hmm. So if that's the case, yeah, you need people to have money. Pretty mm -hmm. much. So, so I thought, yeah, maybe it sounds like a good idea. And he, mm -hmm. was, he looked like this young, energetic guy, you know. And I thought, wow, this is really cool. Mm -hmm. And even then I thought, you know, might be interesting if we have an Asian president, you know, mm -hmm. we had white presidents, we had Barack Obama, so why not? I mean, I mean, it seems like a natural trajectory, you know, if you look at the way the country goes. Mm -hmm. So I thought about it, okay, it's cool. I mentioned it to a few friends of mine, and a lot of them at first, yeah, they needed the whole thing about UBI to be explained to them because they didn't really get it at first. Can you just summarize it yeah. in a, as short a version as you can in oh, case I, 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 in I, case I, somebody yeah, there yeah. does not know what is a UBI? Oh, you want me to summarize UBI? Yeah. Uh -huh. okay, okay, got it, got it. Well, basically, Andrew Yang proposed what he called eventually the freedom dividend, which was supposed to be a version of UBI. Um, he says universal basic income. Others, like Scott Santens, I've heard them call it unconditional basic income. Anyway, the point is, it's basically supposed to be like money that you get every month from the government until the day you die. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's supposed to be unconditional, as they say. Um, it's not supposed to depend on anything and pretty much, yeah. So this was the main crux of it, yeah. Now the financing of it, that's a whole nother conversation, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Andrew Yang proposed a VAT, which was a value added tax, which a lot of countries have, um, if you look around, yeah. 
So the point is, yeah, I was drawn to this, and he also addressed automation and all these other issues that no one was talking about. You know, everyone was talking about, well, not everyone, but people, politicians, let me put it this way. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they pay lip service about jobs and bringing back jobs. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the last 40 years, generally speaking, uh, you know, I mean, yeah, you can argue there have been new jobs, but what we're talking about is good paying jobs, not mm -hmm. the temp jobs or gig jobs, mm -hmm. you know, where people are underpaid without benefits. Those basically have diminished over the last 40 years. So basically, you know, I thought, yeah, he had a really good message and well thought out too. It wasn't like someone just woke up one day and started repeating some slogan because, you know, he thought people would like it. Mm -hmm. He really seemed like he thought it out. And he seemed younger than most. He was like in his early 40s back then, you know, a Gen Xer. So I was like, hmm, <laughs> well, maybe, maybe it's time for people in my age group to finally start yeah. pursuing positions of leadership in the government. Yeah. yeah. So, so basically, uh, I followed pretty much basically most of 2019. Yeah. Up until October of 2019. Then mm -hmm. I started getting involved in these Yang events and Yang Yang events. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, you released your film. Well, you released a version of your film. You had us on YouTube the other night. And then there was Monica's film prior to your film. So basically, my experience is basically a synthesis between those two films. Like, from when I first encountered or got exposed to Andrew Yang in 2018, mm -hmm. up until October, I would say it was like Monica's film. I was mm -hmm. basically following news clips on social media, YouTube, you name it. Mm -hmm. And then the shift happened. Finally, I started getting involved in Yang Yang events and mm -hmm. I started volunteering my time a bit too. So then it became more like your film when you're kind of up close to the action with people in the movement. Right. Yeah. So pretty much that's the way it's been. Uh, you know, uh, you and I... How did we meet? Yeah, that's right. We met, uh, well, we first spoke sometime in October. I don't know if you remember this, but it had to do with that UBI March. Yeah, October 20, 2019. Right, yeah, that March, yeah. Uh, basically, yeah, I saw a tweet on Twitter. I don't know, like Scott Santens, he wanted to hang out with Yang Yang the night before. So, yeah, so... So what happened, yeah, I think I retweeted it or I retweeted it with a post or something or I posted it on Facebook in one of the NYC Yang Yang groups. And, uh, and I think you, you actually contacted me about that, yeah. So, yeah, you, uh, you were, you're trying to organize something more uptown at some cafe, yeah. And yeah, basically, yeah. Oh I yeah, I, I was like, I was like, oh, let's let's get together at the cafe, um, you know, near where I live, very close. Uh, right. Uh, yeah. What is it called? Max Cafe. Max, yeah. Max Cafe, and then it ended up uh, people all went to a different location, like in Midtown West, right, somewhere. Well, where did you no, go? It was downtown. It was on oh. Fourth Street. Oh, oh downtown. Okay, downtown. Okay. Fourth yeah. off yeah. of. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Half, yeah. Yeah. I did not go. I think it's because yeah. I have something like next day I have to do something. I right, right. Well, what happened? Yeah, he changed the location. Yeah, yeah. Because he was gonna be somewhere downtown, supposedly. He he is a Scott sentence, right? Yeah. 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 So basically we met there instead. Uh and yeah, some people couldn't make it. Yeah. Of so it's the night of a pre-UBI March party. Yeah. 
it's it kind of the yeah of okay. the UBI march. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Carl uh, Wadakas also. Oh went. yes, Carl. Yes, I remember Carl. Yes. Oh yeah, I missed you. Yeah, Carl. Yeah. yeah. It must be fun. Yunji went there, right? Yunji. Yes, I met Yunji there for the first time. I think yeah. I met a couple of people, Wendy and her. Yeah. So then I never met you the next day. Um, so I think well, later on we met. I, I was supposed uh, to make it to the march. But yeah, you didn't make it. So we it. we met later in my house, right? For I a debate we, party. I think we met one time before that. Okay. We met one time. I think it was a fundraiser in November. Oh, okay. Uh, at the cutting room. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. That's where it was. I met November twenty fourth. I yeah. met you and Nick there. Yeah. And uh, yeah, Joy Low, I met her there. Yeah, yeah. The rest of you, a couple right. of you, I met there. Yeah. Right. Right. So, yeah, we finally met there, and then uh, then I think we we got together once for a debate watch party. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. then we also met at December. Oh. Uh, was it a thirteen? Uh, which December? Uh, uh, the the signature gathering. Right, the signature gathering. Yes, yes. You had a clip of me in your film. About yeah, it. yeah. yeah. At, at at Andrea headquarters. So yeah, that was really great. So um, now, when Andrea suspended um, his campaign, uh, how did you feel? Oh, I was heartbroken. I was at home. And uh, I was on YouTube just watching news clips. Uh, and yeah, basically, when they announced it, I was mm. like, oh my God, this is horrible. Yeah. Yeah, I was really upset. Yeah. You did not see it's coming? Um, well, here's the thing. Um, I don't mean to sound like Joe Biden when I say, here's the, here's the thing. <laughs> Oh, I always used to talk like that. It to do with Here's the thing. <laughs> if anything, he's copying me, that joke. But yeah, anyway. he's copying you. <laughs> the thing is this. Um, well, he, he wasn't polling well in New Hampshire prior to the New Hampshire primary. Mm. So I did have a bad feeling, but I didn't think he would drop out. Mm. See, I thought he would hang out at least until South Carolina because mm. Mm. it was that congressman or senator Clyburn who mm. seemed to like Andrew Yang in South Carolina. Mm. And by the way, he was the one who came through for Joe Biden mm. in South Carolina. So, oh, hey, Mansoor. Oh. <laughs> uh, Your friend, friend, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So anyway, yeah. um, so it, it was. I thought if he hung out until South Carolina, he would mm -hmm. do fine because I thought if anything, he would gain traction in South Carolina, if not Nevada. Mm -hmm. New Hampshire, yeah. When I didn't see him moving in those polls, I I knew it could be a bad sign, you know. Um, yeah, Iowa was a disappointment. I thought he would do better in Iowa. Because there was a lot of Yang Gang canvassing in Iowa, mm -hmm. it seemed like energetic movement. But uh, and then when he didn't make that debate in Iowa, the one you were protesting with that mm -hmm. in Iowa with all, yeah. all of them, yeah. I had a feeling, yeah, this might not go well mm -hmm. for him, at least the first few contests. But I figured mm -hmm. he would pull. A good showing in South Carolina because mm. I thought Clyburn would come out for him. Yeah, and, uh, and you know he 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 was getting all these other supporters like uh, the comedian. What was his name? Oh, David Chappelle. Chappelle, yes, Chappelle. Yeah, yeah. yeah and so, MC MC Jane. MC Jane. MC Jane, the rapper. Yeah, yeah, but there right. was another guy. Um, uh, Ronnie, there. Ronnie Chung. Yeah, there was some African American musician. I forgot oh. the name. Uh -huh. also. Uh, yeah, some hip hop guy. I think. Yeah. Rat. But anyway, yeah. the point is, so I thought he would pull something out, mm -hmm. and I thought as soon as he won one contest, the media would have to pay attention to it. Mm -hmm. 
like he's not you know what i'm saying like mm -hmm. so it just never happened so he yeah when he suspended in new hampshire yeah i was a little bit surprised i was taken aback i mean there was some subtle hints that maybe it would happen sooner than i thought but yeah yeah i did not get it even if i was in a house full of uh people who worked for his campaign in new hampshire yeah. and they were actually let go a week before the new hampshire primary right they were like oh so so that's a huge indication right but somehow um i guess sometimes you're just like a you're in denial right like i was in in denial you know i didn't well, i wouldn't call it denial at that point <laughs> look we, we knew he was never the media's favorite mm -hmm. but what i guess surprised me was that people, I guess, they listen to the media too. Mm -hmm. yeah. As much as they complain about the media having all these flaws, yeah, they a good portion of people they seem to like get their cue from the media also. That's yeah. uh, the strange thing about it. Yeah, yeah, he's the, overall just a still unknown guy. You know, is he? He, I mean, he was not a politician before, and. Uh, all of a sudden, you know, he, he's done this and he actually did very well according to, you know, according to he was not a politician. He Whoa. Look at all these people before him. There's 12 of them at one point, S senators, you know, and uh, all these people uh, have have done uh, public servant, servant jobs and has r name recognitions. So he he actually went before them in terms of you know, ranking, you know, uh, it was ranking at one time, ranking number four, which is not too bad at all. Yeah. But um, what do you feel about uh, now that uh, today and yesterday, well, we still haven't officially heard the news of uh, Georgia's two senator uh, runoff uh, election news. Um, we anticipate, I guess, um, he's going to run for New York mayor. How do you feel about that? That's great. I'm very excited about it. Yeah. Yeah. Proud to be a New Yorker to have him as the mayor. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So some people said, uh, some people afraid said uh, being a New Yorker, a New York a mayor is not an easy job. Um, they afraid uh, he's had to deal with, you know, the biggest union, the biggest police uh, force, the biggest to whatever, and um, a lot of potholes in New York. So, how do you feel, like, yeah, about it, people's worry? You know, it's a tough job. But my comment to those people is, uh, you know, getting into politics when you're not a politician, straight out of school or law school. <laughs> it's going to be tough no matter how you do it. So the point is, yeah, I mean, anything else he does to get into politics is also going to be tough. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I don't see him as just wanting to be mayor. I mean, I, I truly believe, yeah, he does want to be president, you know. So to reach that level is going to be tough, no matter how you do it. Mm -hmm. you know, like there's no easy path there. All the paths will be difficult. Yeah. You know saying? Like people who say you should start a third party. Well, that's also very difficult. Right. You know saying? So, mm -hmm. you know, you know, for certain endeavors, there is no easy path or there's no shortcut. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so I think, yeah, those people, you know, they have to acknowledge that no matter what he does, it's going to be difficult. And right. Right. So let's talk about you. Um, now, lots of uh, colleges since uh, March has been closed down and you deliver your lectures through online. So how is that experience going on? Like, Tell us a little bit about how you teach now online. Is it a difficult or is what is the 
pros and what is are the cons? Well, I'll tell you. When this mandatory teach online started, um, a lot of instructors they had this attitude like, "No way, I'm doing this online." Then you know, you know when the pandemic finally hit us in uh, March, April. The attitude has shifted. It's been like, okay, well, I'm not going back into a classroom until I have the vaccine. That was the mm. <laughs> popular sentiment among the instructors. So the thing is, uh, yeah, you were reading in the bio, like we have the synchronous and the asynchronous modes. Mm. So the synchronous would be like if you're trying to deliver kind of a lecture in real time. Which is kind of what this white area behind me is all about, you see. Oh. This is like a board I can write on, you yeah. know, thing. Yeah. So the point is, yeah, you can deliver a lecture this way. And for math, it's kind of important when you solve a problem because it's the problem solving that a lot of the students have trouble with. Yeah. So you have to solve a problem for them kind mm -hmm. of real time. Mm -hmm. really each step mm -hmm. now that would be the synchronous method now asynchronous would be like uh, like you just prepare material for them online mm -hmm. and basically that stuff the stuff online you basically give the material which almost makes it like an independent study so pretty much that's it. You basically go through stuff like that. So the stuff like through Blackboard or mm -hmm. Canvas, some schools use Canvas instead of Blackboard. You basically put the material for them online in a kind of a sequential order for them to do it. Mm -hmm. And you could embed reading material um, you could embed videos like MP4 files, stuff like that. So I have been toying with that because when I started, it was mostly the synchronous method. But I'm thinking to switch to the asynchronous for mm. time, maybe, maybe this year sometime. So one of the things you could do with the asynchronous, you could just have material for them. But once you put it together, you can reuse it in the future. So a lot of instructors, they actually like the asynchronous for that reason. But the trade-off is this, if you do the asynchronous, what they realized is they figured it would be less work once they established the course the first time with all the material. But what they realized was that they ended up doing more office hours that way. So, because when the students have questions, you have to address them, yeah. So, if you look at the amount of time they put into the office hours, it was, it, for some of them, it was more than the time they would have spent lecturing. Mm. So, it's kind of interesting. So, what I have done, one of the things I've done, was to create a YouTube channel. Mm -hmm for this with videos for one specific course it's a stats course i've taught for a while so um if i can share this with you yeah. i'd like to share Please. a video with you let me see okay hold on chrome tab oh wait a minute it's in the chrome tab already or do i have to do it over no oh i see what you're saying i see what you're saying got it Okay, hold on. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So here's a video. Basically, this is a one-way analysis of variance called an ANOVA in uh, statistics. So in this video, well, the beginning of this video, the first nine minutes, I'm showing them how to do it by hand through with a textbook and all that stuff. 
But here, I'm showing them how to use a software to do it. So here, so, so the, the way this data, data is going to be answered. answered. So you answer the data. We will answer the time it took for people to recover. That's, That's going to be our first variable. And we're going to list all the values here together. All right. So let me just fast forward a bit. Ones and twos and threes. Yeah, these were, to be honest, I don't remember what they were. I would have okay. to look at the problem. Now, but we entered the data. So, so the, the first, first variable was we'll see what they were. time. Yeah, it was recovery time. The second variable was categorized by the type of medication. Got it. So it was recovery of time based on... I guess three different types of medication. So anyway, so let me just this one answer will... this. Basically, you create labels in the software, and then you go on. You oh, conduct the analysis. Round four side and Welch. Let's, Let's just, just get, get descriptive and homogeneity of variance. Although they said to assume that the variances were equal or not significantly different. So let's continue. Let's get our test. All right, here we go. Let me maximize this. So there we go. We have the descriptive statistics. So you can get an output table of the data as I got here. Now let me... The degrees of freedom will fail to reject on all hypotheses. This one is less than 7.53. Yeah. So that puts us, it's going to put us in the unshaded region. If we're in the unshaded region, we will fail to reject on all hypothesis. And if we fail to reject the null hypothesis, we have to go back to our null and alternative hypothesis and see which one was the claim. But we were asked, anyway. we had before. So the point but, is, anyway. So basically with the software, yeah. You can analyze data using these softwares if the uh, well, that was for a statistics class. It was an applied stats class. So basically, yeah, you can do the analysis by hand, in which case I would do it on this glorious board here. Or you can do it with the software. So I think, yeah, videos generally, when it comes to dealing with softwares, work better because people can just rewind and watch. Mm hmm you know, at their own pace. Yeah. So, yeah. So, basically, that's the YouTube channel. Yeah. So, I only have 10 videos thus far devoted to statistics, but maybe so, more, more subjects, more videos. So, the the video you created on YouTube channel, what is it called? You, what is your, your YouTube channel name? Oh, it's in the description of this video, right? Okay. A link is there. It's called. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's it's a bit long. I don't I don't know how smart that was. I I may have to change it. <laughs> it's called Big Picture Statistics and Computer Analysis. Oh. Yeah. So I'll type it in the chat, and maybe you can share it. Yeah. Um. Over here, I have youtube.com slash channel slash. U C R A V I P E J K, a bunch of numbers. Yeah, it's not a customized. Uh, okay, okay. So I have that. Yeah, I can put it. So now this YouTube channel is your own thing, or it's related to college? It's my own channel, but I created it originally for the students to use. Oh, I see. Yeah, so that's what it was intended for, but I realized, yeah, why not just make it to the public? Um, 
yeah and i hope to have more stuff uh up uh this is mostly using the spss software package we'll have the data analysis package in excel probably this upcoming semester mm -hmm. and maybe we'll have we'll have stuff in r and python maybe also do you find you spend uh, more time uh develop this uh do you find communication between you and your student uh how how does that dynamic go by using um you know online teaching well like do you find you have to spend more time explaining yourself or do you find it's a pretty uh practical way of deliver your teaching well, I'm going to say, uh, I think for most people, when we did it last spring, because uh, we kind of did it halfway in the semester, like in March, mm -hmm. a lot of people were thrown off guard. Um, I was able to adjust to using Zoom quite easily because, uh, I don't know if you remember this, we did some of those Yang Gang events before the pandemic, before the shutdown. <laughs> mm, right. So when there were rumors about the school even closing before it closed, yeah. in my mind, it just went, we're going to end up using Zoom. <laughs> yeah. And lo and behold, yeah. it worked out exactly like that. So my transition, I think, was pretty seamless. Uh-huh. The only thing that wasn't seamless, you see these little subtleties like lighting. Mm, right. This thing, when I started, it was half the size. Oh. I realized I needed it bigger. Yeah. yeah. You even can't see how big it is, but it goes pretty, yeah. pretty wide across. Yeah. yeah. Long mm. the so, again, yeah, the, the aiming the camera a little higher. Yeah. When you're taller and you don't put it high enough, you know, you get these strange views. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. just this camera etiquette, all these things kind yeah. of came into play. Yeah. So that evolved. But as far as using softwares and technology, I would yeah. say I think I was better off than most I had colleagues that I had to help. Yeah. Yeah. Now we shot a video of one of my colleagues because he struggled. He would come here to mm. give his lectures. Mm. And I swear to you, if you see that video, Ching, you are going to laugh so loud. What yeah. happened? Yeah. We had to use the camera from the computer. Uh, and what we did we had to balance the computer because he was writing on paper. Mm. So the camera, as he lectured, would go focus on the paper as he's handwriting, as he's solving math problems. Peter, sorry. Peter. Yes. I hear, I hear a little background, like hammering. No, yeah, it's these pipes. When they oh, come okay. on, these pipes make noise. I have loud okay. pipes where I live. Okay. <laughs> okay. I apologize. There's nothing I can do about that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I know I hear it too. It does annoy me. Mm -hmm. But uh, so the point is to balance the laptop camera so it mm -hmm. had the right angle at the piece of paper as he's writing. Mm -hmm. We had to use a big one of those big packs of the Costco toilet paper mm -hmm. to balance it. Yeah. And I'm telling you, if anybody saw this, shall we say, low-level production here, <laughs> they would have laughed so loud. I yeah. mean, it would have made hilarious blooper videos. I mean, it wasn't really a blooper, but it was just such a weird design. Yeah. Yeah, I, I know. <laughs> you had to bring the camera to the teaching level, then you have to elevate it, right? And yeah, but if you're aiming it at a piece of paper and the only camera you have is on your laptop, yeah, imagine that. Yeah. You literally have to turn the laptop. Yeah, <laughs> right. So right. the camera is above the page. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's challenging. Right. And then 
when you're handwriting, you can't do that. You have to, so we needed something to balance it with that. We ended up using, uh, you know, this big pack of the Costco toilet paper. Yeah. Mm. So yeah. Pretty funny. So, so then later on, did you develop some better method of filming? Or oh, still, hold on. That still? method was for a colleague of mine. It wasn't oh. for me. I, uh, I always had this down. I had this thing at a certain level. I didn't have it at the right level originally, mm -hmm. but basically this was the idea. This thing, I was able to order this for less than 10 bucks from Amazon mm. and packs of markers, mm. you know. Right. Yeah, the eraser, I had one free from one of the, from the campus, yeah. So that was not a big deal, but the thing is, you just had to innovate a little bit. That's all it was. Right. So, so I would say now I think a lot of people are enjoying teaching from home. Mm. Like we're seeing people take course loads they never took before just mm. because they don't mm. have to be on campus. Mm. They think, okay, I don't have to commute. I'll deliver this from my home. And if I can create the asynchronous course, mm. I only mm. have to do it once. Yeah. Then I just have to make sure I get the same course over and over again. Right. So, right. But again, like I said, the trade off was the number of office hours might increase with the asynchronous. Uh -huh. Because the students are bound to have questions, especially in math. I think math, if you do it purely asynchronously, it becomes an independent study. And I think math is one of the worst subjects for people to do as an independent study, unless they just have a knack for math. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. yeah. But you, uh, you, uh, you do some teaching yourself. You, uh, you're a music professor. At yeah, the I, teach, um, I teach um, private uh, violin. Uh, viola student uh, is... Um, you use StreamYard, use like this. I use StreamYard to record. Uh, why I, am I now use Zoom? I think a Zoom you need to have a professional account, otherwise you're uh, you can only use forty minutes. They'll shut you off. So I did not have a Zoom professional account. Uh, I do have a uh, a paid account for uh, StreamYard. Okay. So can, yeah. can I add something to that? Actually, uh, yeah. The first semester. Yeah. I don't, the colleges, I don't think they got us those Zoom accounts efficiently. Yeah. So I got my own, my paid account. Yeah. Because I thought it was a good thing if I needed for other video conferencing. Um, yeah, it's about 15 bucks a month, the most basic pro plan. Mm -hmm. And I would say it's worth it. But here's the catch. This semester that just passed. Yeah. The college got enterprise accounts. So with the enterprise accounts, each instructor gets yeah. an account through the yeah. college. Mm -hmm. And basically that one, you have basically the pro account features. You can have a session that's longer than 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. You get cloud storage, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so probably... The school you're at, they might offer their instructors uh, mm. enterprise accounts now for free. Mm. Yeah, I teach uh, violin uh, is uh, my own uh, thing. It has nothing to do with the college. It's just my own oh, private. Oh, I see, I see. I see. Yeah. You always so, use the college account for that. Anyway. Yeah, there's actually a lot of way of doing it. You can use even uh, WeChat. WeChat has a camera. You could do a video camera. And you could use actually Facebook. Facebook, you know, just the FaceTime, or you could use, uh, I, I'm i just comfortable now uh, of using uh, StreamYard that sometimes I record the lesson and I will uh, give it to the student, you know, so they can see what the lesson was. Anyway, so, but um, for music, it's a little challenge for me um, is that, um, you know, studying violin is a very physical thing. I'm sorry. You know? Yeah, yeah, I lost the video for okay. like you maybe one second. One yeah. second. Study. No, I'm here now. Yeah. Yeah. 
studying violin is a very physical thing. So you really need to like uh, explain how you do it, you know, what are you not to do it? Uh, you know, left hand, right hand, and this, this physically, this it's it's a lot of touching actually. So it's very difficult for me to not be able to sort of a, a touch uh, student or demonstrate to the student to students. So it's it's challenge, yeah, for for me. And then through stream sound, sounding is not very good. Oh, the sound, yeah, yeah kind of squeaky, you know, like a high pitched and kind of high frequency kind of sound. So I'm not crazy about the only, I think the one good thing is that uh, they don't have to travel, you know, because they normally have to travel to me, you know, have lesson. So one good thing is they don't have to travel. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We save time of travel and commute. Right. Yeah, time right. So. right. So um, anyway, um, so let's um, talk about, what is the what do you see the future of your your teaching uh, is the is the school you see right now is january do you see any hope colleges will go back in september well my university they already made the announcement that they're going to be online in september whoa yeah whoa so at least these this whole year we're going to be online it looks like yeah Wow. So, <laughs> so what can I say? I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I know, yeah, teaching yeah. music, like you said, teaching the viola, it's you need to touch the instrument. Yeah, no, I need to touch them, you know, yeah. I need to make sure yeah. they hold it correctly. Right, left exactly. right, yeah. you, you can't yeah. know how good their grip is and everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a lot, lot of physical contact, actually. Right, exactly. So I still do teach some students now in uh, in person. We all ma wear masks. You know, they come to me, and uh, yeah. So like half of my students online, half of my students they came to me. You know, to oh, then yeah. yeah, if you could still see them somehow, yeah, then it yeah, we can work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're uh, yeah. So so far so good. You know, um. Me, I'm, I'm pretty, you know, I'm pretty okay. I'm in my family's okay, so no one is, you know, has affected by the COVID. So, um, yeah. Um, now, we are, we're, we're almost five o'clock actually. So, would you like to talk about a little bit about the, your uh, how, how the how the the the, the dark, you know, the, my uh, my young and my young and uh my young and diary right <laughs> my young and diary i forgot the, the movie name my young and diary like um so tell us a little bit about how you your experience with this project because you have been very helpful yeah yeah um well i remember as you were shooting even uh before you even decided to make it yeah but uh yeah so um, yeah, you basically asked me to watch it for you. Then you asked me for feedback, yeah. So we we watched it together and yeah, we we talked about it, yeah. So I gave you some feedback. I think my feedback was similar to Lel's, Lel Nieves, right? Mm -hmm. I, uh, I felt, yeah, maybe you needed more narration just to guide the viewer because when you just have silent images or images without dialogue or any voice, people can focus on all kinds of things. So maybe your point doesn't come across the way you want it to come across. But yeah, basically I realized also that's probably not your style either. <laughs> you prefer to communicate more through images, stuff like that more than you know, speaking verbally. So, yeah, what well, my thing was like, yeah, like you could take all this feedback, but at the same time, you have to kind of preserve what you're trying to do the way you're trying to do it, because otherwise it's not your film anymore. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. 
So, so yeah, you basically you have to reach this balance, like how much you want to get across and how far are you willing to go without compromising your style. Mm. That's pretty much it, yeah. So yeah, we watched your film. I've seen your film go from like 100 plus minutes <laughs> to 99 to 94 to 89, <laughs> 84. <laughs> and I think now 70 line. 70 line is where it's at, right? Yes. <laughs> 79. Yeah. yeah. I just worked on today a little bit for another three hours, cleaning up a couple of things, even after uh, Monday night. When I see the film, I see problems. You know, a lot of time is a typo, typo problem, font problem, and then a little bit audio, you know, some certain sound. It's a little lost. So I fixed all of these things and I re-rendered. Uh, and then it's um, Vermeer right now. Um, I took uh, I took the YouTube version into Unlisted today. So it's not on YouTube anymore. It's though. on list, uh, It's on YouTube. If people have the have the YouTube link, they can still see it. But it's not open. It's unlisted. Okay. So if people didn't save the YouTube link, they wouldn't be able to see it. That's what you're saying. Yeah, but you know, I made announcement on Facebook or and on Twitter at certain point. Okay. I I gave out the uh, if link. we have the announcement, we can watch it still. Yeah, I gave the oh. link. Oh, I gave the link fun. on Twitter uh yeah. before Monday. So if someone someone can always go back to see my Twitter I, unless I I delete my Twitter, which I did not delete my Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. So they can still find it. It's just like it's not like open open, like someone goes to my YouTube channel, which is Jewel Media. And then you see the video right there, you know. So yeah. I, I just don't feel terribly comfortable about leaving it as so accessible, you know. Because part of the reason is because I always see problems, little problems. They are problems to me, you know. So well, yeah, that's the thing. Sometimes when you're that close to something, a piece of work, mm -hmm. you know where to look to see the problems. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, a lot of these problems are in the eye of the beholder, you know. <laughs> Maybe they're not real problems. They're, they're... They are. They are. It's a couple of things. Wild. No? Yeah. Okay. Because there's a, many different fonts. One font in size is about date because it's a diary. So the date is, the, all the date has to be the same. Maybe one or two times during our editing uh, our editing, meaning me and Lu Wei, my editor, mm. came um, last week. Um, yeah, so there, it was a little off certain, uh, maybe two or three of them. Yeah, and then you have the fonts, either it's bold or regular. Mm. You know, that's another thing. I like regular. He likes bold. So I actually oh. change all the dates to regular. I don't like bold. It's too fat. It's too big and too obnoxious. Too invasive, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, to me, the date it was too, too, too big, too big. So too, too, too thick. You know. So anyway, um, yeah. So all of these things, and then some sound area, and like two places he cut the footage, and I put it back. You know, and like, yeah. So anyway, um. Because it's it's a to me it's very important the rhythm and the music has to be in the right place. Like when uh, I drove uh, from Iowa, dr drove left Iowa, and then the next scene is on the airplane. That scene, the music has to go a little climax, the higher point. But the way my friend did it to me, because he does not really know my intention, you know, so he cut short then it's totally not to my liking because I need that music at that point. Okay. So let me ask you. Yeah. See, when he wanted you to do something and it wasn't to your liking, Yeah. did you discuss with him, uh, like give him your reason why you uh -huh. did it your way mm -hmm. and then have him explain why yeah. He thinks his way would yeah. work. 
better. Yes. You guys have that discussion? Yeah, we have discussions on certain things, uh, so, but this, this uh, Iowa from driving to airplane to with the music, that thing he cut, he did not ask me. He did it. But it's because I know my footage so well. Mm. I know this because every time at that point, I cry. Every oh, time. Wow. Every time at this driving in, you know, long for a long time, a whole phrase of music finish. The next phrase is, la, 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 you know, something like that. Yeah. And then I always feel very emotional. So when I watched it, when he left, uh, he cut that short. The reason he cut it because he doesn't want to make it too long. Like I drive, say, for, for like, say, eight measures. He only want me to drive for four measures in I terms see. of music. Yeah, but he doesn't know this is so important to me because the next after the A measure is a sort of a little climax of that section right. to me. Basically. So he doesn't know. So uh, the reason also is that um, he came to help me in the kind of last minute, like two days before I show the film. So we worked 30 hours in two days. Wow. 30 hours. So he cannot possibly ask me everything he wants to change. You know what I mean? I understand because he's like a true pro, like a pro editor, oh, you know? Yeah. yeah. He does things so quickly. You know, I have to do, say, one hour. He just get it down in 10 minutes. You know? <laughs> so, well, let me ask you a question. When yeah. the two of you disagreed on yeah. any point in the film, whether to cut it or not, who was usually right, you or him? I think he's mostly right. He's oh, mostly, right. yeah, I think he's mostly right. Uh, but I wanted to keep this particular place and another place also has to do music, I think. It's because um, it is from music point of view, I'm a musician and that this you know so i know my material very well so so i i would go back to my own way i don't need to go back to say hey you know by the way his name is lu wei i don't need to say wei i change it back i don't need to you know because yeah. he's not going to sit here with me again to watch it you know mm -hmm. he's kind of just like a help me in the last minute almost like a <laughs> an emergency help oh no, yeah it's true yeah <laughs> emergency yeah. help but uh, but he yeah. So just by watching him, I learned so much. And uh, yeah, that has to. And then he also he got rid of. Uh, oh, do you remember? There's a photography Jimmy Van, Jimmy Van stands in the uh, Jimmy Van stands in uh, at at the bowling alley. We went to bowl in Iowa. And yeah, then, the bowling scene. Yeah. yeah. And then he was standing there. He looks like a kind of weird like he's <laughs> posing and then i said wow you look like a a movie star and then he's like made some funny sound and then the next thing is he said what are you doing here you know so this whole scene to my friend way is probably not very funny to him you know because he doesn't know jimmy you know and from his point of view what's the whole point you know like putting Jim but jimmy to me He's always so funny. He's a photographer from California. And he's always, he's, he's just a funny guy. I don't even know him very well, but he's funny. So I put that thing back <laughs> also because he just looks so goofy, you know? And, and, yeah. and I don't think, I don't, I don't know to me, a way, yeah, we let me keep that another section is me and Nick, we were singing, uh, we were talking about a come and go. Come and go is a gas station in Iowa. Yeah, I remember that. Story. Yeah, <laughs> it's like every corner has a gas station called Come and Go, K U M and Go. And it's just so funny, you know. It's like it's kind of like a, you know what I mean? Yeah, Come and Go. Well, I know what you mean. You I, mean I, I know what it sounds like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you come in, you go, but it has <laughs> other, you know, other other indication you can imagine. Uh, I know, imagine. I know, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, yeah. It's yeah. Not C O M E and go. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, yeah. He, so, so, so the spelling makes it extra funny. 
don't Wei know. doesn't think it's relevant to the whole Yangan message, you know, because we were just making fun of the come and the go. Well, it's not. It was just humor, right? It's funny, you know, because yeah. because uh, Nick started to dance, you know. Yeah, yeah. And You're you funny. see, that's one of the things when you get involved in these activities. You meet people and you create these fun memories when you look back. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you only get that by engaging with other people in the movement. Right, right. Mm -hmm. I think the young man will yeah. appreciate more, right? So, but They'll appreciate it more. The average person who is not part of any political movement, whether it be Yang Gang or some other, you know, movement for another candidate, they probably wouldn't get it. Yeah, yeah, for, yeah. For us, we yeah. get. It. Yeah, we know how special these moments are. Yeah. So I told him I'll get rid of him when I make a short. You know. Like, like the another alternative is to make a short. A short is under forty minutes for most of the festival. So, a film festival likes to actually accept more shorts because they can show more shorts than to show one person's film is an hour and a half hour long. You know, ninety minutes long. So, yeah. But I have a feeling. Tell me if I'm wrong. Because the pandemic, the whole film festival. Has changed the dynamics of present presenting. Yeah, I'm not sure. They may be virtual film yeah, festivals. They're going to do virtual. Yeah, because so next year film festival too. starts sometime Mar March, April, yeah. May. A lot of May and June and July. By those, even July, I doubt it. You can go into a film festival, sit in the theater, watch a movie with another fifty to two hundred people. You know. So, so, so why I am saying that is the reason I say that is I hope the rules are going to be less strict in terms of presenting, meaning because people are presenting film online, there's not no issue of renting a, 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 a theater have time restriction. You see, right? Yeah. So online, that's one thing. The other is that maybe they will be more generous about uh about premiere status they understand people are online people watch things online you know yeah they may be more generous but uh yeah <laughs> I, I don't know it's hard to see like i mm -hmm. like i have a hard time just wrapping my head around uh, a virtual film festival or a fully online film festival like yeah it defeats the purpose of the festival in a way. Yeah. You know right. what I mean? Like normally people would meet, go to the theater. Right. Sometimes the director would come and talk live to the audience. Right. You know, there would right. be sometimes Q&A after a screening, stuff like that. So right. with all of that going virtual, I, yeah, something will definitely be missing. Like, right, right. remember even our after party after the. Right. Yeah, there's the no show. human contact. It there's, wasn't the same. Yeah. Yeah. I've been film festivals here and there, and, you know, you have uh, happy hours, you know, before the premiere of certain things. And then you yeah. have you have a Q&A afterwards with the director or, you know, the important uh, producer. Oh, exactly. And you have uh, panels, uh, other hours with all the you know filmmaking issues and panels. Yeah, exactly. Now you're not. Yeah. Then you have. Yeah. Then yeah, you definitely have, changed. Yeah. 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 Then you give awards and stuff like that. So anyway, yeah. Um, anything else you wanted to touch before? Would you like to do a, a, a rapid fire? Oh uh, sure. Let's okay. do rapid fire. Rapid fire is like I ask a short question and you answer shortly. Like okay. say, uh, for instance, um, what's your favorite color? Okay. Red. <laughs> Something like that. So do you have anything else you wanted to talk about before we do the rapid fire? Um, no, I think yeah, we covered yeah. most yeah. things. Yeah. yeah. 
it looks the riot uh riot gets under the control now the, oh, the under control so that's a good sign yeah so they're, they're our after. republic will continue after this day that's good yeah and then dc mayor ordered a 6 p.m curfew today okay so it PM. if things are under control and uh yeah, they all left. You know, no politician was killed, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, because there was a report they stormed Nancy Pelosi's office at one point. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, yeah. someone sit on her chair. Really out of control. Mm -hmm. oh, sitting on her chair in the chamber, that's nothing, uh -huh. as long as they're out of there. But if they went to her office, mm -hmm. that's a mm -hmm. little easier. yeah. But anyway, if it's under control, that's a good sign. Yeah, yeah, it looks like, yeah. Okay, let's do, um, so thank you for uh, being with me today, Peter. And I want to thank our uh, audience. We have a few and- um, Yeah, how many do we have? Because I can't see. Yeah, I, I, not a whole lot, just a okay. few, yeah. No so, problem. Yeah, and- I don't know who is Economic Lifestyle New York City. Oh, I know, I know. He's a fellow professor. Oh. He's Yang Gang. Oh, really? He's a bio professor at oh, okay. City College, yeah. Oh, okay. All right. So, he, uh, he, yeah, he knows, he met Diane also, Diane Pagel. Oh, okay, okay, great. So I thought Reading someone... Economic Life. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, who else do you see? He said, I love touching my instrument. <laughs> His instrument, like a guitar or something, he wrote there. Uh, we had uh, Nick earlier, and then we have uh, Mansoor. Yeah, okay, Mansoor. Glad yeah, to hear Mansoor. You can, can you see the a comment? No, no, because I see the StreamYard thing. I don't see the YouTube. Yeah, on the right hand side, you can see. Uh, let me see. Make oh, your... I have to click comments, not private chat. Yeah, oh, it's both. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. I see. Economic Life commented, Lick commented. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. Great. So um, please subscribe to uh, Jewel Media, um, Jewel Media uh, YouTube channel. Um, I, do, uh, I do this um, conversation, a conversation with someone special once a week at least sometimes we add stuff on Monday and Friday. So but Wednesday is pretty solid every almost every wednesday so yeah. please and one more thing if i could add yeah. for those of you who are not subscribed to my youtube channel mm. please subscribe i'm trying to beat that algorithm very badly <laughs> yeah <laughs> so please yeah um subscribe peter's youtube channel which is uh in the in the in the in the chat in the common area right yeah, and it's also in the description, I believe. Yeah, yeah uh -huh. in the YouTube de description underneath. Okay, great. Yeah. Thanks so much, everybody. Um, be safe. All right, so let's do the um, rapid fire. Um, you already say your favorite color is r is red. Um, what 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 did you read recently? What your first, your your book. What did I read recently? Um, well, it was this Murakami book. Uh, it's, you know, he's a Japanese writer. Yeah, it was called Men Without Women. Yeah. Oh. But the title is deceptive. It's not what people think. <laughs> There's no... Uh, uh -huh. Yeah. It's, but anyway, it was more like vignettes from different stories. It wasn't one continuous story. I see. I'm embarrassed to say it was a birthday present one year from somebody. Oh, yeah. I had a hard time getting into it, I have to be honest. But, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, what is your, uh, what is your favorite, uh, favorite food genre? Oh, that's a tough one. There are so many good foods, Ching. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe Korean. I don't know. Yeah. Korean? Yes. Oh, yeah. I love yes. Korean. Yes, yeah. yes. I love Korean food. Yeah. Yes. Um, what happened if you're not a math professor? What profession you might have? Uh, 
That's a good, tough one. I don't know. Like, uh, maybe, <laughs> hmm. Actually, yeah, I might have had a better profession. Maybe, uh, maybe I would have worked in tech. Maybe I would have been coding. Hmm. So I don't know. Maybe I took the wrong path. <laughs> Yeah. So uh, let's see. Um, what is your favorite music genre? Oh, that's a tough one, man. There's so many good music in different genres, Ching. Okay. <laughs> favorite. Ah, uh, that's. Well, you can name three. Ah, uh, well. Ah, uh, dear. I like classical jazz and uh 80s retro <laughs> <laughs> yeah. sounds good to me sounds good yeah. to me yeah so um what happened if tomorrow you win 30 million dollars lottery 30 million dollars if i win it mm -hmm. let me see I would probably give away ten million to my friends. Uh, I don't know. The other twenty million, I would probably invest some of it. Although I'm not so sure anymore. <laughs> you know, I would take a very long vacation first. I'd just travel everywhere, all around the world. Sounds good. And just forget about everything. Just detach myself from, you know, so many things that I've become in tune with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that would be it. I would travel. Sounds great. Sounds great. Yeah. So, uh, what kind of uh, what kind of uh, behavior of people uh, turns you off? turns me off mm -hmm. uh, that's an interesting question <laughs> let me see turns me off hmm well i guess when they try to be too contrarian for their own good what's contrary oh, well someone who's contrarian is someone who questions everything and they do it just to annoy people. So they start asking questions that when you answer the question, they'll ask a follow-up question. <laughs> but the questions are designed to irritate the person who's trying to answer them. I see. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. That's funny. Um, so uh, what is your favorite favorite uh, uh, alcohol beverage. Wow, that's a good one. <laughs> People who watched your film know why you're asking me that. <laughs> uh, well, there's a few good ones, but I guess uh, maybe uh, I guess I don't know. This is going to sound a little bit weird and well, actually an old fashioned yeah, it's basically uh, whiskey or scotch with some liqueur and maybe a piece of fruit. <laughs> Sounds great. Sounds great. Well, um, yeah. So now talking about traveling, um, can you name like a three places you really want to go, like t as a as a traveler? Okay. Probably Maldives, the beaches look amazing there. And because of global warming, they're supposed to go underwater sometime in the future. Oh. So that would be one place to check out. That would uh -huh. be a good beach place. Um, maybe ski slopes in, in uh, Switzerland in a winter. Mm. And uh, economic life at Mansoor, you're going to love this. Mm -hmm. Probably the Himalayas in Pakistan. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, actually, uh, yeah, economic life took a trip there last summer. And yeah, and he had the time of his life. Yeah, he went, Mansoor went too. Mansoor actually yeah, is from Pakistan. But yeah, the, it's just, yeah, the images they brought back from the mountains and all. Mm -hmm. it's incredible. Yeah. So that would definitely be one place to visit. Yeah. Sounds great. Yeah. So um, now I know you're a math professor, right? Are you? Um, some people are more uh, into listening. Some people like like they 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 love listen stuff, music or whatever. Some people are more visual. So oral or visual. What are you? That's a good question. Um, I would say most people, when they're younger, they're visual. As they get older, I don't think they're so visual anymore. <laughs> the thing is this, like, math, most people's image of math, like, the way we do it, drawing graphs and stuff, mm. as you go deeper into math and you get into the more of the research-based math, there's less of that. So basically... When you get into higher math, yeah, you're trying to move away from pictures, actually, if you can. Mm -hmm. You always can't, but I mean, if you can, it's a good thing. So, you know, we have a saying, a picture is worth a thousand words. Yeah. All right, I'll say this, but an equation is worth a thousand pictures. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, but boy, I have a... Yeah. I have an interruption. Uh, anyway, thank you so okay, much. Yeah. One last question. Sure. Coffee or tea? What? Coffee or tea? Tea. tea. <laughs> yeah? You're a tea person. Oh. I'm a tea person. There was a point when I was a coffee person, but uh -huh. I, I think tea, tea. Okay. I like tea more. Yeah. yeah. Great. Well, thank you so much, Peter. It's great chatting with you and... Uh, Yes, and, uh, always a pleasure also chatting with you. Yeah, and thank you so much for uh, everything and for your support of my project and for helping me, you know, in many different ways and editing it, writing things and editing more and listen to me in the middle of the night to complain about this and that to you. <laughs> Thanks for being there for me. <laughs> thank you worry, so much. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, we're going to end here. And uh, so everybody, um, please stay safe. And uh, we'll see you soon. Okay? Okay, great. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Okay.